today on The Joy of Editing, we're focusing on Nick Collection 7's color effects and how to enhance your images using the Detail Extractor filter. I'll also share tips for pairing it with the TK9 plugin for Photoshop to get the most out of your edits. Let's dive in. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. Thanks for joining me again today. And today, it's the Detail Extractor Filter, a really cool filter inside of the Nick Collection in color effects. And I'm going to show you how we can pair that up with TK9 to get even better results with it. By the way, if you don't yet own the Nick Collection 7 or you'd like to pick up some DxO software, I'll have affiliate links in the description below this video. Click on those links, it'll take you over to DxO and you can pick up the software. When you use my links, I make a small commission and this helps to support the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. So when you use my links, I really appreciate it. Also, I want to inform you, due to an unexpected issue with one of Tony Kuiper's payment methods last week, some customers experienced difficulty completing their purchases at the TK Web Store. The situation began late Wednesday evening and seemed mostly resolved by Friday. Fortunately, it has now been resolved. To ensure everyone has the opportunity to take advantage of the 25% launch discount, the TK Web Store is extending the sell through this Friday, March 7th, 2025. Don't forget to use the exclusive promo code DK25 at checkout to claim your 25% discount. Thanks for your patience and understanding. And now on to the detail extractor filter. Now here I am in Photoshop. I'm just using an Adobe stock image. Now you'll note that I have a linear gradient here at the bottom. There's a reason for that. And you'll see why once we get into color effects. But what I want to do is add detail to the foreground of this image and detail to the sky. But I want to add different amounts of detail to both. So here's how we can set this up. Now, the first thing I want to do is hold down my shift key and click on this button on the Converse CX panel. When I do that, hold the shift and click on this, I save out a sky and foreground channel because remember, I want to treat the sky detail differently from the foreground. Now, a lot of times I don't even add detail to the sky, but in this image, I just want to pop a little bit of detail out in it. Now, one thing I do want to say about this image, it's already edited. If I was doing a full edit on this image, usually I would add details somewhere around like three quarters of the way through the edit, by the way. But where you add detail to the image in your workflow, that's totally up to you. Now, I'll be adding detail to the foreground and the sky. So here's what I want to do. I want to create two smart object layers. And with the TK9 plugin for Photoshop, what I would do would be to hold down the command or control key and click this button right here. We'll get one smart object layer. I'll hold down the command or control key again and click this button again. And now I have two smart object layers. I want to shut the top one off and click on the one right below that. We're going to use this to add detail to the foreground. And now I want to send this layer into color effects. And to do that, we can come click on filter, come to Nick Collection 7 and click on Nick Color Effects. Or you can click on file and come down to automate and click on Nick Collection 7 palette. Or I made myself a TK action. And if I click right here, I can just open up my Nick Collection 7 palette and I'll click on Nick 7 Color Effects and that'll launch color effects. Now, in case you're wondering why I added this linear gradient to the bottom, on the left here, we see shadows into midtones into highlights because the detail extractor filter is unique in the fact that it lightens up shadows and darkens highlights. And I wanted you to be able to see that with this linear gradient. Even though shadows get lighter and highlights get darker, it still maintains detail. But sometimes the highlights get too dark and sometimes the shadows get too light. And that's where the TK9 plugin for Photoshop comes in. And you'll see that when we go back into Photoshop. Now, let's go ahead and add the detail extractor. You'll watch the detail pop, but also look at this linear gradient. So I'll come over to the left side of the interface and click on detail extractor. 
Now, even at the default setting, Detail Extractor 25%, we can see a definite increase in detail. Now, there's way too much in the sky, but remember, I made two different layers in Photoshop. We'll treat the foreground differently than the sky, so just kind of ignore the sky for now. If you want to add more detail, you can drag the Detail Extractor to the right. But as I do, watch the shadow side of the linear gradient and the highlight. The highlights will get darker the shadows will get lighter. So watch, I'm going to start to drag this across. Can you see that? See how these shadows are getting really light and the highlights are getting really dark because you see this board that's nailed across here and this board here. These should look white, not gray. Notice that we have a shadow and highlight recovery slider here. But if I take the shadow slider and drag it to the right, my shadows will not darken even if I take it the whole way. In fact, they get lighter because it is recovering the shadows. So I don't recommend using the shadow slider. The same with the highlight slider. If I drag this the whole way to the right, the highlights just get really darker. So these two adjustments don't really come into play for me when I'm using the detail extractor. For other filters, yes, but for the detail extractor, not so much. I really like the detail we brought out in this foreground. Let me shut off the detail extractor by clicking right here. Here's before and here's after. Lots of nice detail, but man, we've lost a ton of contrast. That's what this contrast slider is for right here. So if I take this contrast slider and drag it to the right, see, I can bring more contrast into the image, but I'm not a big fan of the way that looks. Let me shut this off. Here's before and here's after. So we've increased contrast. And that doesn't look bad. It's a little over the top. Let me go ahead and drag this detail extractor back to like right here, 50%. Now let me shut this off. Here's before, here's after with all that extra contrast, but it's okay, but I think we can improve it. And that is where the TK9 plugin for Photoshop comes into play. So here's what I'll do. I'm going to double click on this handle right here and reset the contrast to 6% the default setting, and I have a detail extractor setting of 50%. And also note, we have a saturation adjustment, so we can increase the saturation by dragging this slider to the right. I'll double click this handle to reset it, because next up I'll send this back into Photoshop and I'll show you how we work with the TK9 plugin for Photoshop. Also, by the way, we have an effect radius. I normally use this on normal. If you click on this drop down, you can see we have fine. This is what fine looks like. It's more like sharpening smaller detail areas. Normal is a little larger area, and then large are really large areas of detail. And for most of the time, I'm using normal. And now we'll send this back to Photoshop, and you'll note that my detail extractor is at 50%. Let me shut off the detail extractor. Here is before and here's after. I have some nice detail, but I think I can really improve upon this. So I'm going to go ahead and click apply and that'll send us back into Photoshop. Now remember, we have a smart object right here. I'll go ahead and drag my Nick Collection 7 palette out of the way. Now the first thing I want to do, I don't want this in the sky, so I'm going to click on my layer mask calculator. If you recall, I made a sky and a foreground channel. I'll click foreground, click this button to apply it. I'll shut off this layer. Here's before, here's after. Now let's see if we can improve this. And to do that, I will use Blend If. So I'm going to come up to my multi mask panel and click on this Edit Blend If button. Now, note right here, see this number one with an X? This is going to keep the effect from getting in the darkest darks and the lightest lights. And the no darks too just broadens that range. So watch the image when I click on this button. I'll click on it right now. Notice how my highlights came back, my shadows came back. See this board going across here, it got lighter. Now if I uncheck gray, look at this board right here. I'm going to uncheck it and shut off blend if. That's before and there's after. But see that noticeable improvement. It really looks good. Now let me shut off this layer. Here is before and here is after. If I want to add a little bit more contrast here, what I can do is try No Darks 2, No Lights 2 by clicking here. We get a little more contrast. Let me shut this off. Here's before and here's after. Again, before and here's after. If we need a little more contrast, we can always double click Nick 7 Color Effects, go back into Color Effects because it's a smart object, right? And now I could take this contrast slider and maybe drag it to the right a little bit more, maybe to somewhere like right about there. And now let's click Apply. Now I've added a little bit more contrast. So let me shut this off. Here's before 
and here's after. Now we can always double click Nick 7 Color Effects, go back in and decrease the amount of detail or increase it or whatever, but I'm pretty happy with it right there. And now let's work on the sky. So I'm gonna click on the sky layer and turn it on, but I want you to note something. We've lost all the detail in the foreground because if I shut off this top layer, there's no mask on it. If I shut off the layer, we can see there's our detail back. I'm gonna turn it back on. We're gonna send this into color effects and add the detail extractor. When we come back, we will add a sky mask to this layer. So let me go ahead and click on my Nick Collection 7 palette and drag it up. And now I'll click on Nick 7 color effects and launch color effects. And here we are in color effects. Now there's no detail adjustment on this image whatsoever right now. What I'm going to do is click on the detail extractor. Now I'm only looking at the sky and the default setting of 25% I think is way too much. I'm going to drag this the whole way off and let's just build this up slowly. I think I just want to add a little bit of detail to the sky. A lot of times I don't ever add detail to the sky, but in this case, let's do it. 15%, let me shut off the detail extractor by clicking right here. There's before, there's after. Just a nice little bit of detail in the sky. Now it's on the entire image, but we'll take care of that once we get back in Photoshop. I'll click apply and that sends us back into Photoshop. I'll drag this pellet out of the way. The amount of the detail extraction is for the sky only. If I shut off the sky layer, you can see the detail that I've added to the foreground. But right now when I turn the sky back on, it's being hidden. So here's what we need to do. Come up to the combo or CX panel, click on the layer mask calculator button, click on sky, and now click this button right here to apply it to the sky. And now you'll note when I shut off the sky layer, here's before and here's after the detail. Now if I come to the foreground detail layer and if I shut it off, here's before I added detail and I'll turn it back on, here is after. And now let's see the overall before and after. So on the combo or CX panel, I'll click this button right here. We started out here and now we end up here. So now we have a certain amount of detail in the foreground and a different amount of detail in the sky. Well, there you have it using the detail extractor filter part of Nick Collection 7, coupled with the TK9 plugin for Photoshop for making layer masks, working with Blend If. I think you're gonna get much nicer results. By the way, for the sky detail adjustment, I didn't need Blend If because it was a more subtle adjustment, but for the foreground, I definitely needed it just to bring back some more contrast for a much nicer result. When it comes to adding detail to images, I have three choices. I have the TK Clarity Action, I can work with the Camera Raw Filter in Photoshop, and then I can work with Color Effects' Detail Extractor. Now they're all going to add detail, but they all work a little differently, and I like to experiment to see which one I like the best on the image I'm editing at the time. Hey, if you enjoyed today's tutorial, please give it a like and share it with your friends. If you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe. Click that bell notification icon. Click all so that you can receive all notifications. And then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll get notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today on the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. And I will see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.